So as I told you the first similarity is that the uh, halogens also need one electron to complete their uh, octet or you can say to attain stability. So similarly the hydrogen also need an electron to complete its duplet right. So as I am showing you with an example we have fluorine we have uh, to first of all I am writing the configuration for it that is 27, 287 right. So somehow uh, all the elements has got the 7 ba as valence electron right. So I am just showing you that that means it has 2 7 that means it needs one electron to complete its octet and after comp uh, this thing gaining one electron it is just forming the electronegative ion and the electronegative ion has electronic configuration as 2 8 that means the octet is complete and it becomes a stable ion right. But and similarly when we talk about the uh, in case of hydrogen so hydrogen has got one atomic number one electron so that means to attain stability it has it needs one electron because electronic configuration is also one right. So it means it has one electron in uh, valence shell and we know that if the valence shell is the first shell so it act at least it has the two electrons. So that means it can gain one electron forming an electronegative ion. So that means after gaining one electron they are attaining stability the halogens and similarly the hydrogen after gaining one electron is attaining the stability. So that means it shows uh, that they are just linked with each other right. And the second property which is striking the second similarity you can say that is striking in my mind is that it is a electro it is an electronegative element or you can say it, it is forming an electronegative ion. It, I have shown in, with the examples see they are gaining electrons and they are just acquiring the negative charge. It is also gaining electron and acquiring the negative charge. So that means what kind of uh, ion it is forming? It is forming an electronegative ion like the halogens form the electronegative ion. Right. So that, th uh, that means uh, it has been justified the second property is done as well. So the third property which is striking in my mind is that their atomicity. Now what is the atomicity? Atomicity means the number or the types of atoms which are present in a molecule. So if we look for the you can say the molecule of the halogens or if we look for the existence of the halogens that how they exist in nature at room temperature and how the hydrogen exists. So we get to know that both exist like the chlorine, fluorine they all exist as gases that is Cl2 and similarly the hydrogen exists as H2. We know that uh, you know that I have told you in bonding as well that how the bond is formed between them it has got 7 electrons again it has 7 electrons so I have just shown it this is an electron cloud so they are just sharing in electrons that means the two chlorine atoms are just joined by a covalent bond forming the chlorine molecule. Similarly the hydrogen do the hydrogen and hydrogen they have one electron to complete octet they are just sharing their mutual sharing their electrons and the result in the formation of one single bond that is again the covalent molecule and uh, this thing the atomicity is going to be H2. So that means that it is also diatomic like the halogens are. So that means we have I've just told you that there are so many similarities that they possess and one more uh, the similarity striking in my mind is that they can form ionic compounds as well as they can form the covalent compounds. Like the first I am telling you that how the halogens form an ionic as well as covalent compound. So you know that NaCl so in NaCl, N is positive and Cl is negative. They are just united to for united to form a crystal lattice. So that means this compound is ionic in nature, right? Similarly, we have CCl4, non-metal, non-metal. That means a covalent compound. So similarly, the water do like we have NaH, sodium hydride, again a ionic compound, and we have hydrogen as CH4, non-metal, non-metal, again a covalent compound. So that means, so this justifies the fourth property as well. That means there are four similarities with the halogens as well. So that means the hydrogen resembles the first uh, alkali metal group and as well as the 17 halogen group. But to avoid the confusion or you can say to just uh, to make uh, the periodic table easy, hydrogen cannot be placed simultaneously. We know that we cannot place simultaneously an element in two groups. So that is why it has been assigned a separate position that is, uh, that is why it is the first element of the periodic table, right. I think the position of hydrogen is justified now and the similarities of hydrogen with alkali metals and halogen as well is justified and you know that that what the similarities they have and I have also shown you with the example. So just do not forget it right. So 
the second uh, topic what we will be taking up is the we now know the uh, you can say we know the introduction where do we found we know who gave the name who synthesized the hydrogen we know that what is the position in the periodic table we know that and what is the similarity with the uh, halogens and the first group we know that and uh, the last one in the you can say almost we we know that where what is the importance for it and all we are just familiar with it right so the next topic what we'll be going to start today will be a uh, preparation of hydrogen that how or what are the different methods by which the hydrogen can be prepared right so the first first we are taking actually we have three types of preparation right one is the general preparation other is the lab preparation the third one is the industrial preparation so by these three different methods we can prepare hydrogen right so first is the general preparation means the various means by which we can get the hydrogen may have the uh, you can say certain drawbacks or limitation that we are not using those general methods out of them only few we are using or uh, there are some limitations which are uh, just shown by those methods but still we get to have hydrogen in, in that case that means the hydrogen is produced as a result of the reactions <coughs> so first I am taking into the consideration the general preparation. So the first general preparation we have is reaction of metal metals with water. No matter it can be cold, it can be boiling water or it can be steam. But somehow after these reactions we get to have hydrogen. But there are few limitations as I told you that we are not using that method as a main method but still we get to have the hydrogen at the end of the reaction right. The second general preparation we have is reaction of metals with dilute acids. This we will be discussing what dilute acids to be used and what dilute acid not to be used or which metal is to be used or which metal can't be used right. So <coughs> likewise we have the third more method that is the reaction of metal with bases. I think you are familiar with the bases like sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide all those compounds which have the hydroxide ion in them they act as bases right and you know that, that the, uh, the bases which are soluble in water act as an alkali also. So alkali is a co-branch of the base as well. All the alkalis are bases but all the bases are not alkalis because all the bases are not soluble in the water right. So <laughs> that is beyond our scope because in this we won't be uh, needing it. So just starting with the first method that is the general general preparation and I have told you that the first method which we use is the reaction of metals with the water right. So we have certain metals so the first property is that the reaction of metals with water to form H2 right that the basic method that we why we are studying it is that that we will be seeing that whether we get H2 or not right. So <coughs> I am just taking a random example of metals then we will be listing them in the reactivity series and that will uh, help you in learn in a better way right. So the examples where example which is striking in my mind what I am taking for a metal is that the potassium. So what happens when I react potassium with water we know that when metal react with water it forms the typical basis the strong basis. So likewise the potassium do it reacts with cold water no heating is required in that ca this case right. So when the K we know that H H2O can be written like this also not like do not like this H write this H and OH in case of uh, the uh, place of the H2O just remind in mind because it will help you in making the chemical formulas right. So it is just needed to just make you understand that yes with what uh, the K has to be crossed with right. So we know that the valency of the K is this so obviously the positive is going to attach with the negative ion. So that means it is going to form potassium hydroxide and along with that hydrogen is liberated as H2. So this is potassium hydroxide and this is the product which we were looking for that is the hydrogen. But what is the actual nature of this reaction? The nature of this reaction is that this uh, potassium react with water uh, you can say has a great affinity for uh, water and uh, it reacts explosively 
right that means the reaction is so exothermic that means the so much amount of heat is liberated which leads to the explosion that means the hydrogen hydrogen which is liberated catches fire so that means it the, it cannot serve as a better method for the preparing preparation of h2 right because we need an h2 we don't need that the hydrogen should burn in air or forming a certain kind of uh, producing a certain kind of flame or something like that we just need a pure hydrogen so that means obviously it is not going to be a fit method to prepare hydrogen but still it is one of the general method by which we can prepare it right i am just stating few more examples for you similarly i am taking an example of sodium so when sodium reacts with water again it is going to form its hydroxide with h2 this reaction is also exothermic and explosive but uh, you can say it's not too violent it's not too violent like the first one the potassium because sodium is less reactive than the potassium so obviously the heat evolved way is going to be less as compared to the potassium right but you know what uh, you can say the what is the limitation uh, one more problem is faced in this, this reaction what what uh, what is that just listen to me carefully in this reaction the, the obviously the reaction is violent and explosive and explosion everything is there and moreover along with that sodium starts forming a, or you can say sodium just melt into a globule and just darts into the water then what happens so it just do not uh, that means you can say the collection of the hydrogen gas becomes very difficult in that case so to avoid that what we do we just use uh, sodium wrapped in something and uh, so that the hydrogen uh, it does not dart in the water and hydrogen can be collected easily but still it is not a good method to because again it is an exothermic and can be a violent method right so similarly i am taking up the example of any other uh, other metal that is the calcium so again calcium reacts with water to form calcium hydroxide you know where this 2 has come it is just because of the valency of uh, calcium is 2 positive earlier i was taking the one positive valency elements and the calcium is 2 so obviously it will when we'll criss cross like ca2 positive and oh negative you know that how to make we have just discussed in the language of chemistry as well so this is the calcium hydroxide and again with it we are getting hydrogen so what is the outcome for this reaction so obviously this reaction can act as a method of uh, producing h2 because uh, it, it is not too violent no not much heat is liberated but the limitation comes the, here in a, in another way because the calcium is too expensive so that means this reaction uh, uh, carried out for the production of hydrogen is going to be expensive so that means because we always we look for a reaction in which uh, turns out to be a cheap also because we don't have to prepare hydrogen only once right we'll be preparing hydrogen in a large amount so we need a reaction which comes out to be a cheap as well and moreover it should not be violent or should not lead to any kind of explosions right so that means the again the calcium reacts with these all sodium potassium calcium react with cold water but still it is of no use because in the potassium it catches fire again it's violent and in this case this uh, this thing the calcium is expensive so that means these metals do not uh, serve as a better method for preparing the hydrogen so we have few more metals which we can list for them like magnesium magnesium reacts with water but it do not react with cold water keep in mind the cold water reactions are only till potassium sodium and calcium right the magnesium onward the reaction with water is uh, like decreasing somehow the affinity is decreasing somehow like the magnesium if we want magnesium to react with water we need a boiling water and when we react metals with boil otherwise when we react any element with water it is going to form a hydroxide so keep in mind right the reaction of any element with water is just going to result in the formation of hydroxide but when we are using the boiling water or steam so instead of forming the hydroxide they form the oxides right so keep in mind this is very important and uh, many of you just just write the hydroxide so it's not like that whenever an element react with the, this thing the boiling water or the steam they do not form hydroxides they they form hydrogen but they don't form hydroxide instead of hydroxide they form the hydrogen uh, sorry oxides so similarly it will form the magnesium oxide and h2 so that means this reaction is uh, the good one because the only the limitation is that we need to boil it so that's not a big deal right so it can serve as a good reaction or you can say it is it can serve as a good method for preparing the hydrogen right so similarly i am looking up the metals which uh, whose reactivities are less than it like aluminum iron and zinc 
they definitely react with water but when they react and in which form they react so they react with steam they do not react with boiling water or hot water they react when they are red hot so their reaction is with the typical with steam not in any case they react with cold water or hot water they always react with steam and whenever i have told you when they react with boiling water and steam they just form their this just form oxides not hydroxides so just i am so, uh, look at the board i am forming the oxides of aluminium along with hydrogen iron oxide again hydrogen zinc oxide again hydrogen you need to remember that instead of fe2o3 we get fe3o4 that means the oxide which is stable or you can say the oxide which is formed when iron reacts with steam is not the fe2o3 it is the fe3o4 this is the major mistake what you all do so just keep in mind it is not fe2o3 it is fe3o4 right that means the ferric oxide so i have just told you the many examples and below zinc we have the very less reactive elements metals you can say which do not react with water right so the lead onwards no metal react with the, this thing the water so that means if i want to just uh, put them or list them into the reactivity series according to the reaction so i am just putting it just let, uh, have a look then copper mercury silver gold and platinum you know that potassium sodium calcium magnesium aluminium zinc iron tin lead hydrogen and then copper mercury silver gold platinum right so we know that uh, you can cite from the few examples what i have given you they both the three of them react with water with cold water the reaction being boilant less boilant but the calcium is expensive and when we talk about the magnesium it reacts with boiling water forming its oxide right and uh, aluminium zinc and iron they react with steam and when they react with steam they form their respective oxides and i told you you need to remember that iron instead of forming the ferrous oxide it forms the ferric oxide keep in mind i'm repeating this again and again because this is the major mistake what you all do you just you just remember that yes you have to form the oxide but instead of forming the ferric oxide you all form ferrous oxide and that is wrong so you have to form the ferric oxide right along with this this we get to h2 so from tin and lead onwards you can say the reactivity just decreases they don't react with water and uh, the elements the metals which are placed below hydrogen do not react with water at any condition right so that means the normal temperature that means i'm talking about the condition which is necessary or the condition which is suitable or the condition which we can use to uh, uh, at the, the certain condition which which is needed for the production of hydrogen so they don't react with the water in that case so this is just i have summed up for you on the basis of reactivity series and i think it is clear from the examples also that i have stated for you so this is the first method what we were discussing that is the general preparation of metals when they react with water now we'll be taking up the second uh, this thing the general preparation that there is the reaction of metals with the dilute acids so in the, the reaction is going to happen in the same way like they were displacing the hydrogen and just combining with the hydroxide in that case so similarly in this also they will be combining with the you can say the uh, radicals or the chlorides fluorides bromides leaving hydrogen aside that means they they will leads to the formation of hydrogen as well so that i am stating with an example so second reaction general preparation what we are studying is reaction of metal with dilute acids so first of all you should know what kind of dilute acids to be used right so we generally use you know the term dilute acid dilute acid is that first of all you should know what a, what an acid is acid is that substance which when added in water just produce hydrogen ions right now if i'm uh, uh, talking that uh, the acid used is the dilute acid that means that acid has more content of water in it right so you need to use the acid and which one which has the more amount of water content so which dilute acid because we get many dilute acids so which dilute acid you are going to use is normally the hydrochloric acid and the sulfuric acid 
one question is just coming in my mind I, and I cannot, uh, I can't stop myself uh, from telling you because that is an important question. In this case, we use diluted acid HCl and H2SO4. Uh, don't ever use HNO3, right? Because the reason being HNO3 is strong, powerful oxidizing agent. So what does it do? It just oxidizes the hydrogen produced into H2O. So we get H2O instead of H2. Again, I am repeating for you, do not do not use HNO3 as dilute acid for the preparation of hydrogen from metals because uh, HNO3 act as uh, the oxidizing agent, it just oxidizes H2 to H2O. So instead of H2, H2 hydrogen gas, we get the water. So that means HNO3 is not used, right. And I uh, will be stating you with the examples as well. So when we, when we talk about the reactivity series like the potassium, sodium and calcium, they, they do react with dilute acids. I am just showing you. They react with dilute acids. They just crisscross. You know that, na? how to do that. K with Cl, liberating H2. Again, if I take H2SO4 in this case, then Na2 sodium sulfate plus H2. You know that. I think you are familiar with the valencies, right? Because we did in the language of chemistry as well. Similarly, I am taking an example of HCl for this. You know this, right? You know how to do these reactions. So, when they are reacting with it, so what we get to see, so obviously the hydrogen gas is liberated. But these reactions are not you, or you can say these metals are not used for preparing the hydrogen from dilute acid. Now, the question must be arising in your mind that what is the reason behind when they are reacting so uh, you can say comfortably with the acids, but then what is the reason behind? The reason behind is very important because we need hydrogen, we do not need an explosion, right? So, in these all reactions are exothermic reactions. They produce heat and they produce heat in such a amount that explosion occurs. So we don't need an explosion, we just need an hydrogen gas. So that is why these metals are not considered as right elements to react with dilute, uh, dilute acid to produce H2 gas, right. So instead of them, we use the magnesium, aluminium, zinc, we can use. Right, so I'm just like because the reaction as we as the reactivity decreases, the liberation of heat also decreases. So somehow the small amount of heat is released, but the reaction is not violent or will not lead to any kind of explosion. So here I'm writing an example. See Mg with HCl. Again, I'm writing the valencies. You know, positive part is crisscrossed with the negative one. We did in language of chemistry, magnesium chloride, and then we get our desired product for which we were doing it that is the hydrogen gas. Similarly, I am doing it with the sulfuric acid as well because you should know that how it reacts with the sulfuric acid because either of the acid can be used. Again, I am putting the valencies. Do not put this valency on the chemical reactions. They are, I am just putting it to make you familiar that how we are getting the compound CaOH hold twice where that from where that 2, 3, 4 is being uh, is coming, right. So just these uh, keep this valency in mind or you can write in rough. So just make the desired product and uh, directly uh, write it here, right. So again positive part is going to react with the negative part. So what, what do we get after crisscrossing? Al2 SO4, it is a radical, so it has to be enclosed in bracket 3 plus H2. So, again, it is our desired product. So, that means we can get uh, the hydrogen on reacting the metal with dilute acids, but these metals are uh, obviously not going to be used. We will be using the different metals, and moreover, the lead is not used. The lead metal is not used. So, Keep in mind, we are not using HNO3 and moreover, we are which metal we are not using? These three metals because they lead to explosion and the other one is lead, right? Now, the question must be arising in your mind that lead is not in reactive element as we are moving down, the reactivity is decreasing, right? So, when we react lead with the, this thing, the acid, what happens? Why it do not react with an acid, right? 